I'm not the only one affected. You know, you, you can't take it personal because it's uh, everybody, so. As of yesterday, had 442 confirmed cases. 287 of those were active. The numbers are growing daily. They're, they're growing. I'm hoping that once we open back up, when all this is gone, that, you know, or under control, that, you know, they'll come back and support us. My name is Tammy Steineman, and I am from Yoakum. It was built in 1922. It shut down in uh, 1991 and 1990, I believe. When I, st when I was in junior high, it shut down. And I actually never came, I may have come once. I did live in Yoakum, but I didn't, um, you know, I didn't get out very much, I guess. My parents did like, I don't know why. They're like, did you come? I'm like, I remember like La Bamba and all that, but I don't remember like spending a lot of time here. I may have come once or so, but I just knew that I wanted it, being a teacher and giving it, giving the kids in the community something to do. The number of people that came that used to come here when they were in school and they're, you know, in their 60s or 70s, it was, it, that was huge. So that is not what I was expecting. You know, I was expecting the young kids to come and have fun, but I have, a, I have them all range that come and email and text because they used to work here, they used to come here. My name's Annie Rodriguez. I'm the mayor of the city of Yoakum. I've been for 16 years. I've been on council for like 24 years. I love Yoakum, I'm born and raised here. Just wanted to help make it more livable, more better for, our, make it a better place for us to live for everybody. You come to Yoakum if you need to, because we are, we're not off the main high, you know, interstate or anything. Years ago in the early 1900s, we were a big tomato uh, town. Uh, the railroad would, you know, uh, they would, the farmers would bring their tomatoes to the railroad and they would take them off, you know, they would use the train to transport their tomatoes. And then, uh, I would say in the 70s or late 60s, we became a leather. And at one time we were a big leather company. One time we had 13 leather companies here, big ones, little ones, you know, but now we're down to just a couple of them. So this is the balcony. We have 30 chairs up here. So we just finished this. It was the beginning of this 2020 that I finished the balcony. Last summer was theater two. Yeah, so it was the beginning of 2020. So it was big yeah. before we, before COVID and then after COVID, it, that one, ha that has not been, you know, as successful. So this is two, it's a little bit smaller. And this was not originally a theater. So we had to build it into a theater. So we, we poured the slab and, and this building and that building were one. Like this, the restaurant, it's all one building. And we're still one building. We just built a, a very expensive sound wall. Like if it's a film that does really well, then you definitely want it in the 200 seater. If, it, if you realize like the first night that this one does better, then the next day I sure am like switching, switching them. And then it's like, it doesn't do, it's like, oh, you know, so, you know, damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yeah. But, and sometimes it doesn't matter what it is, we'll always put it in there at least one night because our balcony customers wanna yeah. buy the balcony. We'll advertise, hey, you know, such and such is over there. You wanna, you know, do the balcony. So it's a lot of work. It, it's definitely a lot of work. So that's what the movie comes in? This is what the movie and the trailers and everything come in. There are certain films that were 35 millimeter that they yeah. just put on CD that I can't get a DCP for. So I'll do a DVD, but then you can't put trailers and music. Yeah. Like you just kind of go up there and hit play. So it was like 710 and a customer's like, hey, the movie hasn't started. I'm like, oh, <laughs> and I'm like running upstairs. I'm like, I gotta hit play. If everybody thinks it's easy, but it's, I don't just throw in a DVD. It's, it's a hard drive that goes in here. So I tell the projector what to do. So you do have a full 
outside the job aside from I do. I teach. I teach at Sweet Home School. I've taught 18 years. And so I coach the boys uh, football, basketball, and co-ed softball. Um, last year was my last year of coaching, so now I'm just going to be a teacher in the classroom. So that'll be nice. My husband is amazing, so he helps with the kids. Uh, but, you know, I do a lot of work at home uh, in the evenings after the kids go to bed. I stay up late, you know. But um, now it kind of just runs itself. You know, it, it's something that I guess I just do, you know, payroll and just, yeah. it just happens, so. Uh, I'm not, I don't run for the position of mayor. I'm elected by the uh, council. We're volunteers. We are not, it's not a paid position. I'm self-employed. I do uh, insurance, retirement plans. So. Another surge in cases across Texas, nearly 1,000 new cases and 14 additional deaths from yesterday. In Central Texas, no signs of the virus slowing down either. 52 cases new in Travis County, and now a seventh fatality. Before we shut down the first time, you know, that the governor shut everything down, we were still doing okay, um, just not at the time. You know, spring break to the end of summer is usually really huge for us, and we were doing okay. We started preparing right away. Yes, we did. However we could. We were going under the governor's rulings, everything the governor, and that's the way we still stayed. I did do a declaration of a disaster, uh, which is not, has, does not have an expiration date. We, we did close our doors to City Hall. You could only go in by appointment. If you needed to go in, everything by phone. We did close our Harvest Building, closed the golf course, which I got a lot of static for the golf course. <laughs> closed our parks, our pavilions. We, uh, the community center at the back, the uh, cooking uh, shed, we had to cook uh, close that too. So there was a lot of things we had to close just to prepare, so. Probably about 12 weeks, we shut it down and then we opened up at the beginning of June, it, you know, anticipating that the June 17th was going to be unhinged and then the 24th was going to be move on. So that's why we opened up in June. We did do the hand sanitizing and my dad built the guards to put over the concession stand area. You know, we got rid of the things that you know, they had to ask us for ketchup and stuff like that, you know, because we didn't want them touching things and then the next customer touching it, so. But just, you know, cleaning, which we're clean anyway, but even more so if that's possible. So customers were able to come and then, you know, be, you know, seated from other people. So, it, you know, it did okay. It just, um, I think with the number of cases that there are and, you know, customers really not wanting to get out, I think shutting back down was the best thing for us to do. Playing older films for another two months, to me, would be a struggle. And so I just felt that it was best if we just kind of shut down and wait for, wait for the, the new ones to come out. Because that's what people really want to see are the new films. I didn't expect it to last this long. I thought it was just going to be like a little, you know, maybe a couple of months, you know, nothing. But it really got serious. It, it really got serious. And people weren't, they weren't honoring. They weren't doing, you know, trying to keep the distance. They weren't trying to, you know, uh, a lot of people don't believe it's a true thing. They, they're not taking it serious. At the time, the gov when it first started, the governor said, you know, 10 people to a gathering outside, you know, a tent. Well, we had different people in, around the town in neighborhoods that were having parties and stuff, and over 10, we would go, the police would go and, you know, tell them. They gave them all warnings. We did not do any citations. And just to, uh, but the next week in the same group would be having another party and stuff. So, so a lot of them were not taking it seriously. When the mask, you know, issue came that he mandated everybody wear a mask, uh, I've had several calls from businesses uh, that, you know, people come and they say, well, we have a medical condition, but they can't prove it. And, you know, he says they have ownership of that business, so it's their right if 
to turn them away so they can come in. They can give them carb service. They can say, you know, what do you need? We'll go in there and get what you need. And so it's not that they want to turn them away, but we just, we just, they just want to follow the social distance and, and be safe. So our churches are, you know, starting to open up again. That's another thing that we're closed, you know, so that was very hard for a lot of us that attend Mass every morning. This is uh, the report from yesterday from uh, DSHS Region 8. DeWitt County, as of yesterday, had 442 confirmed cases. 287 of those were active and 144 recovered. And uh, I would say they had 11 deaths since it started. Okay, Lavaca County has uh, pending investigation 249, confirmed 262, and then they have active 122 and recovered 399 and only one death. So the numbers are growing daily. They're, they're growing for our two counties. And since Yoakum is divided in two counties, so. We're having another testing next week on the 30th here in Yoakum. We had one in um, early July and we had 500 people tested. We're bringing in more testing because this is round two for, for the pandemic. So if you go ahead and open up your pam your packet, remove everything except the cotton circle. Leave the cotton circle in it. Remove everything from the packet. Leave the cotton circle. All right. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and keep your mask on. Cough into your elbow three times. I would say about maybe three weeks ago, we started opening them again slowly, you know, just, and the golf course, we did open that earlier, uh, but we have rules. You can only ride one to a cart, or unless it's a family member, then you can have two in the cart. They, uh, and they have to stay their distance, and then they have, we go out there and sanitize and make sure that everything is okay after they play during the day, so. The lights come up, the lights go down, you know, the movie plays, the movie stops. Like once I do all the work, then it, it I just program it and it takes care of itself for that film, you know. And then this is the sound tower and then it, it actually communicates with the speakers and the sound behind the screen. In the summertime, you don't want it to get, because it, it's not going to get hot now, I just, it's habit, I just, you know, cut it on. But uh, it does put off some heat, and so you don't want it to, you know, get too hot. Have you ever had any, like, big issues? Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, theater One shut down for a week. Really? Yeah, the sound bar went out. You know, and it's all digital, so there's, you know, nothing you can do. We had to replace that, and that, those are really expensive, so. Even warranty doesn't cover everything. You definitely have to have a rainy day fun you know, and that's kind of what I'm using, but your rainy day fun for anything that, and luckily we have two projectors. So if one goes out, you know, then we can always, you know, shuffle, shuffle around. But yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's all digital and out of our, you know, out of our control. How much, like, does projecting this cost? They're very expensive. They're very expensive. A lot. <laughs> A lot. They're very expensive. I mean, they, they range. It just depends, but. Uh, all 
the restaurants had had to close and they could only do curb service, you know. It affected a lot of them because they had to lay off employees. They couldn't keep paying them because they were closed or they didn't have enough to keep them, you know, for the curb service. So uh, the mom and pop shops, they were not essential, a lot of them. Uh, so they couldn't stay open. The salons, the hairdressers, the embroidery express, you know, the people that uh, flower shops really weren't essential. Just a lot of businesses that had to go without, had to be closed without uh, income. We just have the doors open and we have the workers actually just taking orders outside and they just, we have everything made and we have, we have two behind the counter and then we have two that go back and forth and then we have the two outside so that if for some reason, you know, they don't bring it in, you know, to the back behind the counter, we just have, you know, the people that run and get the order and then we have, they fill the order and then they take it out to the customers. And so, um, you know, we're definitely going to try to do that as well. Uh, we can't do it every week because I think when it's offered every week, then they don't come. But if we do it space enough to where they miss us and they want the popcorn, then we do well doing, doing it like that. How long do you expect the pandemic to last from here on out? Oh, I cannot guess. I mean, people are saying to 2022, I don't know how true, you know. You know, that's the thing about the media. They give us a lot of false info. And that, I think that's what causes a lot of frustration, panic, fear, you know, from our citizens because they listen to a lot of that fake news and, and then the arguing about this or that. It's sad, you know, and I look at all my friends that own businesses that actually, like, that's what feeds their family. You know, it, it's, it's hurt, but, you know, I have faith that everything's going to be good and that, you know, people will come back, you know, because they, they love us. And so I'm hoping that once we open back up, when all this is gone, that, you know, or under control, that, you know, they'll come back and support us. I just want to, you know, uh, just say that, you know, I hope our citizens continue to, you know, practice the social distance, stay safe, wash their hands, and so we can get over this. I just pray that the, the people, you know, support, and I know they will, you know, Yoakum supports, you know, after we open. And the, the huge thing for me is when I do curbside, you know, the number of people that come by that really probably, you know, are just coming by to buy popcorn and drink for me just, you know, because I'm doing it. And so it really does show that, um, you know, the community is going to support, you know, the businesses in town. So, you know, that's, that's all, you know, you hope for is that everything's going to open back up and be okay, you know.